Hi guys, this is Alex at BlackBoxMyCard.com. Today I am finally making a uh, how to use Blackview app on the Android device. Um, iPhone device, you do need one more step, I, which I will go over, but this is specifically going to uh, be used on an Android device. Um, so here I have the DR550 uh, plug into the wall plug here, so it's all powered up. So let's go and uh, show you a couple things here. So um, for iPhone users, for Android users, you need to need to first enable Wi-Fi. So first, go into the setting and turn on the Wi-Fi. So this is where the iPhone users have to pay attention to. You need to go into Wi-Fi setting. And you need to need to connect to the DR550. For Android users, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can simply just enable your Wi-Fi networks. And right now, I'm connected to my home network. But I'm just going to leave it as it is. And then I'm going to start Blackview app. Blackview has two different apps. One for their sports cam, their action cam. The one that looks like a GoPro. Um, and this logo one with the more of a colorful one is the one for DR500 and the DR550 users. So let's uh, see. So it's just starting. So this is the first warning sign you get. So basically um, <clears throat> don't don't use it uh, when driving basically. So okay. First what you do is search Wi-Fi network. And because I've used this device with my cell phone before, I can simply connect it automatically. However, the default password, this is where a lot of people get confused. The default password is Blackview, simply B-L-A-C-K-V-U-E. When you first get it, you just need to connect to the Blackview network. And when you're first time user, um, so for iPhone users, you need to connect to the DR550, DR500 original network, type in Blackview password, and then open up this app, and again, search Wi-Fi network once more time. For Android users, simply connect, I mean, simply enable Wi-Fi network, and then go into the Blackview app, and then, let me see here, a search DR5 uh, search network like this, and it will pop up um, if the Wi-Fi is on. DR500 in stock, the Wi-Fi is always on. Whereas the DR550, you do need to enable Wi-Fi by push of a button on the left. Um, I don't know why they made it this way, but you can change that in, in the setting, which I'll show you. So DR550, the pa default password, as I said, is Blackview. Press OK. And then simply says it's connected. Do you want to keep hearing Wi Fi connection information? I say yes. And it says your Wi Fi password is a default one. You can change your password, which all can be done inside the setting. So once you're logged in, this is what you're going to see your videos that's been recorded. So you see different colors and different letters NF, EF. If you're using DR550, you're going to even see RF, all these uh, different letters. Um, so what the difference is, normal video mode. So any, anywhere you drive, when you start driving, if there's no motion sensor, I mean if there's no G sensor that was triggered or whatsoever, then the, just the normal video gets recorded. When there's a G-sensor that gets triggered because of an impact of a collision or, or a bump or whatever, uh, then you'll see an event video which will say EF, Event Front. So for DR550 users, EF means event video of a front dash cam. If I was using the rear dash cam with the DR550, I would see ER. That means event video of a rear video. So right now I only use the front dash cam, so that's why you only see F and F, EF and PF. So PF means parking mode front video. 
and you can simply also uh, just you can just narrow down which video specific video that you want to look into so I'll say so let's disable everything so let's start I just want to look at the front video of a normal videos simply click that and then click one of those videos to enable a video that was written a couple minutes ago so um, this video was being recorded I suppose and now we're just playing it basically so let's go back and let's say you don't want to look at the event video but you want to look at the parking mode videos here are a whole lot of parking mode videos let's look at something here so yeah so parking mode video um, while I was out for dinner so as you can see the parking mode even when your vehicle is parked because my car is hardwired my dash cam is hardwired I can see whatever that goes around my vehicle while I'm not there so if cars are moving if people are walking by if there's any motion that gets detected it starts writing parking mode videos so let's go back and then finally if you just want to look at the event video simply click on E okay um, so that's how you can view different videos and also PFRF, I mean PR. Uh, that's the difference between the front video to the rear video and only for the DR550 dual channel dash cam owners. I uh, just need to watch out for that. So uh, home button just simply takes you back to the home. Um, if you always want to use a Wi-Fi thing, you can just simply click on Wi-Fi. Once it's logged in, because it's logged in, it takes straight into the Wi-Fi mode. And you can see the live view. Just push up a button. And you can see that that is the angle that's being recorded right now. So let's get out of here. Oh, actually. Um, so let's go back to live view. For the DR550 owners, because you have two dash cams, how do you look at the front or the rear you can simply click that of a button but because it's not connected right now it's not going to show any video cannot find the black view which is fair enough so let's go back here okay so let's look at some of the uh, configurations options that you could do so app setting it's quite straightforward you can either always use black view player or enable Wi-Fi strength monitor in default wise it's all always on um, let's go to firmware setting so this is where it gets very interesting so basic goes over time zone so say let's see Vancouver if I wanna choose Vancouver time Pacific actually it should un be under America America okay here Vancouver Pacific time and if I wanna and it says America Vancouver Pacific time and if you wanna look at some image setting resolution is full HD in the front at 30 frames per second HD in the back with 30 frames per second you can play around with it um, to see what suits you the most uh, and brightness settings within the videos I set it for two that's actually a default mode um, and and to make that changes just simply go back and say click I don't think you can see that right there it says quit after saving so because I changed my time zone I want that to be saved So simply click on that and it says you must reboot black box for applying the setting what that means is press OK and simply unplug this wire from your black view unplug it and then let it completely shut down if you don't see any light blinking on the recording uh, LED, then it's completely shut off. And then simply uh, power it up again. I'm not going to do that um, just yet. But firmware setting, let's go back to firmware setting. And, and then the second one you see is a sensitivity. Um, so normal recording G sensor. Top. Uh, this is default mode, insensitive, sensitive. For black view, I don't necessarily care to be honest because um, it doesn't beep uh, at you. You know, whereas fine view, it, it beeps a lot if the G sensor 
is, um, I mean, even if it's at a stock mode or whatnot, every single time it gets triggered, it, it just makes that beep, 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 beep sound and it just draws people nuts sometimes. But uh, with Blackview, it doesn't do that. So I can just leave it as it is. And again, left, right, you can all, all configure that front and back even. I'm not going to make any changes here. And then you can make parking, recording, G sensor, motion detection, sensitivity. Uh, for parking G sensor, I would make it a little um, more sensitive so that it, it picks up more any any slight um, you know collision or a light impact that you get uh, with a vehicle. And here, finally, motion detection. So this is something that. Um, I would say after a period of testing, I think leaving it at a default mode is the best option because if I, if you put it very sensitive, even with a bird flying, you know, many 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 miles away, can be picked up and it, it starts recording. Sometimes even the leaves fall down and and it detects it as a motion, um, and weighs battery basically. And if you make it insensitive, it's not going to really pick up anything. Less sensitive if you make it like this, it's not really going to pick up any much. But for me, I just leave it around 40 to 50 range. Um, but again, you can test that yourself to see which one you like the most. So let's look at the etc. Um, enable recording status LED. What that is, is that LED that you see on right there. You see that light blinking? That is the enable recording. I mean, that's the the recording status LED. Because it's recording, it's bl it's blinking. And if you don't want to see any LED flashing, you can disable that by turning that off. So security LED is something um, that people like to play around with. You can either shut it off or you can um, leave it on. And you can either leave it on for the normal mode or the uh, or even during the parking mode, and that LED is this LED. Audio disabled. This is the LED that Audio I'm talking disabled. about. Starting audio recording. By the way, um, Blackview, this side of Blackview panel is a Audio touch sensitive. See if you if you if you just swipe your finger like this. Starting audio recording. Audio recording gets activated, and if you touch audio it, recording disabled. audio recording disabled. So sometimes, you know, while you're installing it, maybe you have your fingers over it, and and some of our customers say, hey, I don't have any audio, and and, and it's ninety nine percent of the time it's because of that audio, uh, because someone, like you know, while you're installing, touch the button, recording. disable the sound basically. Okay, so let's go back. I like to leave the security LED, by the way. So it just looks like an extra a security um, feature that that's built into your vehicle. Anyways, voice alarm. Um, you can also disable and enable all these things. So you can be really, really flexible in terms of setting. Um, I like to leave everything as a stock. Really, it doesn't. This one doesn't talk to you so much as much as the other devices. And then also alarm volume, you can uh, make some changes there as well. So it's really quite straightforward. And, and then the Wi-Fi setting would be uh, Wi-Fi auto run for the Wi-Fi DR550 is disabled as a stock. But if you want that Wi-Fi to be always running, you can check that off. Login configuration, you can even change your, uh, uh, you can make your own network name and then the password. Okay, so let's quit after saving. So that's pretty much it. it, it it's quite straightforward. It uh, doesn't have so much things to play around with. Uh, it's nice enough that you can view your video at the scene of the accident, and that's the whole purpose of it. And and personally, I've had that. In, uh, I mean, I, I was rear-ended when I came back from Korea last summer, and and that's where I. Well, that's when I really understood why this Wi-Fi could be very very useful because you can see the video right away because I was using Lucas device at the moment and I had to I had to run to nearest Staples in order to check on the video because I didn't have my laptop with me um, but whereas you know if you have Wi-Fi 
uh, think of it as a Bluetooth streaming. You don't have to necessarily be in a Wi-Fi hotspot to enable um, the Wi-Fi and you don't have to pay any subscription fee the Wi-Fi module is built into the device so that's another that's like one of the most frequently asked questions uh, at Blackbox My Card do I have to pay for subscription fees and do I have to be at Wi-Fi hotspot can I watch my video can I watch my car from a very far away distance and stuff like that no you can't you have to be within you know like two to three meters in order to enable to get access to the the network and 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 then you can watch all these videos lastly this is a uh, tip that I can give you guys if you do get into an accident personally what I do is I carry two set of SD cards and if say do get into an accident I just take that SD card out put it in a in a uh, my you know wallet or something and then having that extra SD card and pop it in and run it but with the Wi-Fi again which is nice is um, say if you want to save this video click on it and then it says file management copy to internal storage so if you copy it to the internal internal storage then it, it, and it saves it to your phone so even if you lose that video because you know it loops itself over you have the original video that's copied to the phone which is really really neat so it does take some time but it's, it's quite fast if you consider how big this videos are right okay so this file copy is complete and if you click on internal internal storage then I have two videos that I have pushed it into and you can see that I have two videos there um, and if you want to go back and whatnot you can go back to Wi-Fi uh, but let me see here you can create a folder and you can also configure app settings and all oh, that's just the same thing Let's look at this multi. Select all, cancel, cut, delete. Huh, interesting. Anyways, so let's go back to the Blackbee Wi Fi. Um, and another last thing that I want to point out is um, if you see this button, that button right there, it says it's locked, and I don't know what exactly. Um, I thought that means this video wouldn't get, you know, uh, looped over. It won't get deleted, right? But actually, that video um, got deleted. Oh, I see. So if it's locked, huh? Interesting. I just figured that out. So if it's locked, I can't go back. If it's unlocked, then you can go back. Oh, interesting. I don't know why I was able to. I mean, I thought because I did that for a couple times, and and it let me go out <laughs> and do everything, but never saved those videos for me. Okay, I might learn something uh, new <laughs> as I'm making this video. Um, so that's my tip. Because it, with the Wi-Fi streaming, you can save your video internally, but you can also carry another set of SD card so that you know if you do get into an accident, just pop that SD card out move it to your somewhere safe and and use that you know uh, SD card to still be able to record videos um, so I think that's about it uh, external is just that app over here ASFAQs um, this is really really simple and there's not much to cover uh, in, in this um, app let me just go back to configuration setting here time hmm I see. Alright, so that's about it. I hope this video helps a lot of people to understand how to get started with the Blackbee Wi-Fi devices. Uh, if you have any questions or if you have any videos that you'd like to see from us, just uh, email us at info at blackboxmycar.com. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thank you very much.